Going to church to go to heaven. Being good to go to heaven in the end is not really relying on Christ. It's not really shedding oneself of love for self that so warps everything in life. And it's not going to make someone more forgiving. We have spoken now about what forgiveness is and that blessed change and how we're motivated with respect to another person. About how forgiveness relaxes the tension to fight or to flee. How it is easier when we're humble, calm, selfless, and committed to a relationship with our brothers and sisters. We've even spoken about how forgiveness is part of the very sanctification of the Christian, becoming like Christ, participating in the divine life of the Holy Trinity. And yet Christians, even Orthodox Christians, do not always do well at forgiveness. We all accept the importance of forgiveness, the value of forgiveness, the beauty of forgiveness in theory, but so many of us stumble in practice. In fact, researchers in psychology note that religiosity and forgiveness do not go hand in hand, even though every major religion puts a certain value on forgiveness. Researchers have even found that religious has a larger impact on how people feel about forgiveness than the actual practice of forgiveness. These findings on forgiveness are disappointing, even disturbing, until one considers how the church fathers looked at religion in general. We know that the fathers took a rather dim view of the religions of ancient Greece. They saw them not only as misguided and false, but as making a person more selfish and passionate. In their minds, the one thing Christianity was not was a religion. As strange as it may sound to modern ears, Christianity, at least Orthodox Christianity, was not about going to heaven or about being protected from harm by God. It was not about keeping the rules or joining a club, but it was about a new, captivating way of life in the here and now based upon one's relationship with the Lord Christ, begun in the heart, then extending to one's thoughts, behavior, and entire life. If Christianity were just about going to heaven, or if it were just about being protected from harm, how would that be a strong enough incentive right here and right now to forgive someone who's hurt me and who I could at least avoid? But if Christianity is about the relationship with Christ in the heart, then forgiveness is also part and parcel to that most important of all relationships. For the saints of the Holy Orthodox Church, their relationship with Christ influences and forms their personalities and their relationships with others. In fact, this is not a mere transformation of outward characteristics, but it's a profound transfiguration of the whole Christian person who naturally imitates Christ in all things, most especially in compassion and forgiveness. One of my favorite Orthodox theologians of the 20th century is Father John Romanides. For me, he made sense of the monastic life that I tried to live on the holy mountain. But he also made sense of orthodoxy when it is most successfully lived in the lives of the saints. He made the rather bold statement that Christianity, 
always meaning Orthodox Christianity, is not a religion at all, but a therapeutic course of treatment that heals the human person. He avoids the term religion or religiosity when describing the Christian way of life. Father John writes, the biblical tradition as preserved by the fathers cannot be identified with or reduced to a system of moral precepts or Christian ethics. It's rather a therapeutical asceticism which is not daunted by any degree of malady of the heart or noetic faculty short of its complete hardening. To take the shape of this asceticism without its heart and core and to apply it to a system of moral precepts for personal and social ethics is to produce a society of puritanical hypocrites who believe they have a special claim on God's love because of their morality, because of their predestination, or because of both. The commandments of Christ cannot be fulfilled by any simple decision to do so or by any confidence in having being elected. Puritanical hypocrites, those who are harsh with others and soft with themselves. Puritanical hypocrites, those who are great at the law and terrible with mercy. Those who believe beliefs and behaviors don't coincide are people not living a life of repentance, not working on the quality of their heart, not longing for the forgiveness and the beauty of the person of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. Going to church to go to heaven, being good to go to heaven, in the end is not really relying on Christ. It's not really shedding oneself of love for self that so warps everything in life. And it's not going to make self someone more forgiving it should start to become clear why being religious, being a churchgoer, is not necessarily associated with being a person who easily forgives. Just admiring morality, just doing what one has to do to get to heaven, heaven just doing what one has, should do to attain God's blessings, just belonging to a group that says that forgiveness is a good thing, all of these religious reasons and practices are not going to be enough to freely, to spontaneously, to wholeheartedly forgive when forgiveness is needed most. To forgive, even on the cross, one needs to become like Christ, and that can take place only in a humble and contrite heart that trusts Christ, follows Christ, and loves Him completely. There's certainly nothing wrong with people trying to do the right thing and to be moral and upstanding citizens. And there is certainly everything right about people coming together to worship the all-holy trinity. The problem is that salvation and transfiguration are not a matter of morality. Worshiping God in Trinity and in truth is not just about the place one does so. The publican and the prodigal were not moral people. They were not good Jews. They did all the wrong things and they were failures at their religion. But yet they came to themselves. Yet they discovered their hearts and in so doing found the way, not just to moral goodness, but to holiness, to righteousness, and to feasting in the Father's house Hold. It is in this sense, and this sense alone, that being a Christian also means being able to easily forgive. In the West, many speak about Lent as a period of struggle whose goal for Christians is to become better people. But for the ancient fathers, it's not just about the good being preserved and their goodness and the crafty becoming good, as is written in the beautiful prayer of St. Basil the Great, although these are things to be prayed for. Rather, it is about discovering the heart, being honest about oneself, being humble before God, and in repentance, beginning an incredible journey in which the soul seeks to be clothed in Christ so that thoughts, desires, the will, everything becomes holy, everything becomes bent on salvation, everything becomes an expression of His forgiveness and His love. No frail human morality can ever hope to contain the overflowing fullness of life with which Christ desires to rejuvenate the faithful. For the Orthodox Christian, 
forgiveness is inextricably linked with a new life in Christ at this very moment and at every moment thereafter. It's an expression of ongoing repentance that is a lifelong process encompassing all our actions and all our interactions. St. John of Damascus was fond of saying, in hell there is no repentance, which is another way of saying Christianity is all about changing the mind now, about communion with Christ in the heart now, and with responding to others on the basis of that communion now. And what is forgiveness if not a change in how we look at a brother or sister who has wronged us in the present? Perhaps, if Christians are not as forgiving in practice as they are in theory, the problem is that their understanding of Christianity, and more importantly, their practice of Christianity is off-center. For those who view the Christian life as primarily a life of joyful and continuous repentance, I think they will find that the forgiveness of God in their hearts will extend to every soul that they touch, regardless of what that soul may have done to them. But for those who view Christianity as just a set of beliefs, or even just a set of behaviors, forgiveness will be a struggle. In Orthodox Christianity, lived as it is meant to be lived, the heart and mind are united in repentance and humble love. But when they are not united, people react without their hearts being illumined by the light of Christ. And in such cases, the religiosity does not help them at all. Only humble repentance and love can do that. Amen.